Okay, part two video, we're going to disassemble it. I'm going to clean it and uh, get it back together. Now, we kind of looked at this. These G-Force pump shotguns have been around for a while. I've just watched videos going back three years to a couple months. Nobody's had any major problems with them, but of course, then again, most people just buy them, fire some rounds out of them, and really don't test them uh, with like three inch slugs and different, you know, they fire some shells and say, hey, it works great, it's a pump shotgun, it's not expensive. So we're going to go a little bit more in depth. But in this video, all right, and again, like I said in all the other videos, this thing's got all kinds of uh, packing grease in it. It had that stupid thing in the barrel that if you weren't paying attention that would have been a catastrophe waiting to happen. Alright, so to disassemble this, it's kind of easy. We'll open her up. Okay. Pull the trigger. Fire it. Alrighty. And then you just take your barrel nut. That off. And just you can slide the barrel right out. Getting it back in is a little bit more difficult, but you can slide it out. And then take it, grasp your pump handle, press this I believe, and there's where our bolt and everything sits on there. And you notice with the bolt that that's down, <clears throat> and then if you move it backwards a little, this comes up. This is going to be critical on reassembling the gun. This little metal thing lifts out so you can change your handguard which is pretty neat. And the only other thing to get the trigger mechanism out of here you just take a punch and one Two, they're kind of loose, which ain't a good thing. And then this should kind of be able to... Okay, to get the trigger group out, <coughs> it gets hung up on this pistol grip. So we're going to try to remove the stock, or at least go down that way. You need a Phillips head screw to unscrew like this, the screw goes through this hole into the butt plate. Okay, and after you loosen this screw, this thing hinges out the butt plate where the screw, you can see, is in here. And I have to look at what, and again, that is all the way down in there. I have to see if I have something with an extension to get into that. <clears throat> all right, the trigger group and the uh, lifter all come out together. Eventually, it was a little stiff, but I just kept wiggling it and out it popped. So you don't have to remove the stock. Now, as far as the stock is concerned, okay, it's 12 inches to get to that nut because this one you can buy different stocks for, or a pistol grip. But it's 12 inches I measured, so you have to have some sort of an Allen wrench or something on an extension to go 12 inches down to get to that uh, nut to get this stock off. So I'm going to go and put this butt plate back on. You just take that tab, hook it in the front, Line it up with this screw and then use the screwdriver to put the butt plate back on. And then we're going to start cleaning it up. Alright, now that we have the gun somewhat disassembled, uh, again, going to hose it down <coughs> with carburetor cleaner. Get all of this stuff off the bolts. Now, all this, there's a lot of heavy oil and, and it's pretty thick stuff. If you fire the gun with this on there, it's just going to gum up on the parts and create problems. Same with the barrel. Now this one, 
I've seen a lot of them are chrome lined. This one's nicer than the other. No burrs or nothing on it. But yeah, this has to all be cleaned out and get that packing grease out of there and you won't have a lot of headaches if you do that. Okay, and pump shotguns, generally you pull the barrel and the bolt out, just uh, wipe the bolt face off because you're not having gas come back into the action. I'm only going to do this once to clean out the uh, shipping oil and lubricate it lightly in the grooves where this rail rides and that should be good. You should be good to go for a while with a pump shotgun. Okay, all the nasty grease and stuff has been eliminated. <clears throat> so let's start the reassembly. A little tricky with this thing, but you can get it. I want to stick the trigger group in. <clears throat> There's a little lever here. You want to kind of squeeze that a little in there. And then once you get that... This, this thing here needs a little tap, and there we go. It pops right in to the hole. Ah, there we go. Okay, what you have to do is kind of get it backwards, tip this down to get this to latch in, and then we're in place, and then the pins, you get them started, and then lightly tap them down and flush, and they should lock in. <coughs> Alright, and once we got that done, Take our hand guard, put this back in there like that, okay. Now the bolt, if you notice, when that lug goes up, you put it on this thing and when this is up, the barrel ain't going to slide in, so you want to slide it a little bit forward. Then we take the whole assembly, stick that in there, and like I said, get this in with this still down, and you want to kind of pull this back. Not all, <clears throat> all the way, but part way. Because the barrel is going to need room for this tab to slide on in there without engaging the bolt. See, this is the, the part that you got to. And if the bolt is gotta make sure the bolt's forward enough so that lug ain't sticking up so the barrel can get in. And then you locked it in. Okay? And we screw this back down on there. Okay. There we go. All clean, set, ready to go to the range. Now, like I mentioned, I've looked up a bunch of videos going back three years. I have not seen 
anybody put something negative. Of course, most of them, they just bought it. It was really inexpensive, anywhere from $200 when they first came out or a little more, 180 and I heard somebody bought one 130 But right now, there's a clearance <coughs> at Palmetto State Armory. They're $110, okay? There's a few things about this. I kind of, the quality-wise, you know, this ain't, I mean, a Mossberg 500 is better than this. But I guess the only way we'll find out is when we go out and shoot it and actually run some ammo through it and see how, how it holds up. I will fire some 3-inch Magnum stuff in this just to see if it stays together. Because I think I only found one video where a guy took the marine version with a wooden stock a little bit higher grade of this and was firing some magnums and ran into a problem. But we'll, we'll give it a run through and see and I'll give you an honest opinion. And if it holds up, you know, and doesn't break apart or break an extractor or <coughs> get really screwed up for 110 bucks, it's going to be a bargain. So we will see guys. We'll see what happens. Like I said, nobody's ever said nothing about it firing on a battery. Okay. That would be a catastrophic failure. Alright, but we'll see how it works. Alright, hit the like button, subscribe, and stay tuned.